Hey everyone, I'm Mike Smith, the fund manager based in Sydney, Australia. I haven't been on YouTube for a little while, so I figured now's a good time to start getting back into it and providing updates on my investment portfolios, which are obviously the same as what other clients are doing as well. This is a great medium for me to be able to communicate further with clients and anyone else that's interested in hearing about what we invest in and, and why we're doing it. So in today's video, we're gonna cover three things. Firstly, we're gonna take a look at what's happening in the US economy, because that's where a lot of our investments are based. What's going on with interest rates, um, that sort of thing. Secondly, we're going to look at a couple of stocks that we are currently invested in, see what's been working, what hasn't been working. And then finally, we're going to go through some portfolio performance numbers based on this financial year for us in Australia, which is the 1st of July up until now. So about four and a half months worth of data. So let's jump into it, take a look and see what's been happening. So if we start off with, I guess, more recently, the CPI figures or the inflation figures that many look at came out last week. They were lower than expected, which was good. And it does seem like the peak could be at hand or has passed. So hopefully the Fed will start to notice that and they should start tapering back some of their rate rises. They've been going at 0.75 every meeting for the last three or four, maybe five now. So rates are starting to get on the high side. I think everybody seems to be getting the message that inflation is here and the Fed is gonna keep raising until basically we stop spending or we stop overpaying for things. Last night we had the PPI numbers come out, which is the raw manufacturing input information and that is lower than expected as well so that's also a good sign so you get the idea that if the manufacturers are paying more for goods to produce the product then we as a consumer are obviously going to pay more as well so that seems to be coming off a little bit uh, which again is a good indicator for where inflation is going or where, where we hope inflation is going and if we look at the market so i'm sure everybody already knows but this year has been extremely challenging so up until let's say mid last week or early last week, the NASDAQ was off about 35% from its peak at the start of the year. So that's a huge downturn for, for that index. We haven't seen that sort of extended drawdown since the GFC. We had some selling obviously in the pandemic, but that was a very quick recovery. So the year I think from memory actually finished positive. So this has been, what are we, nearly into December now or close to December, 11 months of essentially selling it, um, which has been quite difficult to navigate. The Dow and the S&P 500 also down um, in excess of 20%, which has been obviously challenging as well. But we had the CPI figures come out last week and the NASDAQ after that has been up about 10% uh, in that very short space of time. Whilst it's been challenging, I feel like the main cause or the main driver being inflation and uh, obviously the Fed raising interest rates seems to be coming to a head and hopefully going into next year, we might be looking at a different scenario. There's also the little bit of history to consider around midterm elections in the US and how that affects stock markets. So it's been, I think somewhere around 1950, every, every post midterm election, the market's been positive. So let's hope that uh, we get the same again uh, next year. So overall, for in terms of the markets and where we see things going, we are, and we always remain somewhat positive on, on where things are going. So we hold some, really large companies that are continuing to grow despite what everybody's talking and, and all, the, all the, the news that's in the press. So we still see some really good signs and obviously we think that the prices were uh, heavily overinflated at the start of the year. So it's not too much of a surprise to see things come off. However, the companies that we hold, the likes of Apple, Microsoft, Google, are all you know massive companies. Uh, if we look at Apple, for example, their most recent earnings, they generated approximately $90 billion for the quarter. So again, these numbers are just uh, astronomical. The sales are continuing to, to show signs of strength. So we see that as a, as a key position for us overall. And we should also consider that we've just been through earnings season as well, and the numbers there were, were very strong, in our opinion. A lot of companies were beating expectations, the ones that didn't obviously got punished further, but the way we're looking at it now is that so many of these companies have been punished this year that it's very difficult to see them continuing to sell down further. If you look at the likes of Facebook, I know it's a controversial one, but they posted $27 billion in revenue for the three months. The numbers are still still a ginormous considering there's meant to be a downturn in advertising. So Facebook is off circa 65 to 75% from its peak. More recently, it's had a bit of a bounce because uh, Zuckerberg has talked about laying off some 11,000 staff. So big companies seem to be getting the picture that uh, we can't just keep spending and spending and spending, especially if things are going to slow down a little bit. So that's a good sign for a lot of these companies that are getting ahead of 
uh, a potential slowdown, which in turn should lead to some decent earnings continuing throughout next year. So now if we take a look at a few of our positions, some of these companies you may or may not have heard of, but the one that's been in the press the most in the last couple of days is Taiwan Semiconductor, TSM. So this company is responsible for making a huge number of chips that go into everything from mobile phones for Apple, their computers, cars and other vehicles are using them as well. There was news in the last couple of days that Warren Buffett or Berkshire Hathaway had taken up a quite a substantial stake in the business somewhere around the 1.4% of the company. This came out from the 13F filings from uh, Berkshire in the last few days. So there's been a lot of hype around that and the stock was up about 10% on the back of that news. With that said though, it has been punished throughout this year. So the stock is down substantially. However, a lot of that has been stemming from political relations and creating un some uncertainty around what their future may look like. But for us, it, it continues to be a massive growth opportunity. And we see over time the stock doing extremely well, which I guess, Warren Buffett sees the same thing. So we should be on somewhat of a similar playbook there. Another one that's been doing well, but again is off from its peaks is ISRG, which is Intuitive Surgical. So they make a lot of robotic surgical uh, systems and then also a program called DaVinci. So it's throughout, I think there's somewhere around five and a half thousand of these products around various different hospitals around the world. And we see it as a business that is just continuing to grow. And we see that industry being one that is going to continue to grow substantially. So whilst it's off a lot from its peak, more recently over the last few months, it's up about 30% from its earnings results which is fantastic. They suffered a lot during the pandemic because of elective surgeries and the like being put on hold, but now they seem to be coming back um, all guns blazing and ready to go. So that's great to see. Number of the other positions, we won't go into too much detail, but Costco, Target, Goldman Sachs even is up substantially uh, over the last few months, which is great. Everybody's talking about people struggling with mortgages and various other things, but the banks in the US seem to be uh, coming along quite nice. So now if we take a look at the portfolio and a few of the holdings, and we'll jump into the computer to look at that. So over our start of the financial year, about four and a half months, we're looking at a return of somewhere in the vicinity of about four and a half percent. So not too bad over that time period. We can see here the s and is up about six and the NASDAQ up about 3.3. So we're somewhere in the middle at the moment. Our curve has been pretty smooth or flattish, I guess, compared to the rest of the market. A lot of that has to do with the, the fact that we are based in Australia, so our accounts are Australian denominated, which means that when you see a lot of selling in the markets, the US dollar strengthens, so we get a benefit from that, given that we're holding US equities uh, and the Aussie dollar is weakening. So our value will increase on the back of that. So the market's going down, US dollar's going up, it sort of flattens our curve out a lot. And you can see that uh, quite well through here. And the, the opposite happens as well. When the market is going up in the US, it tends to be like a risk on play. So people are selling dollars or selling US dollars and buying riskier assets. So selling US against the Aussie, for example. So we lose on that. So when the, when the Aussie dollar appreciates, our account balances decrease, but when that happens, usually the stock market is going up as well. So they're quite closely correlated. So you can see here, there was a period where the markets did really well um, through July, but now balances were, they were moving, but not the, like the rest of the market. Um, but then obviously there's a big downturn through that period there. Our balances come off, but then are quite flat through there. So we are obviously seeing the effects of the US dollar against the Aussie. And in many cases, it helps to sort of offset large drawdowns like what we've seen this year. So overall, uh, up about 4.5% for the financial year. And all things considered, given the year that we've had and it feels like the market's been selling this entire year, it's not a bad result at all. So now if we take a look at a few of the positions and what they've added for the portfolio over this time. And obviously we have our positions are different weightings. So our largest holding is Costco, it makes up about 7% and downwards from there. These won't show the weightings. You can see the dollar figures in there um, and the change. But ISRG over the last four and a half months has added to that overall 4% return, it's, it's contributed 1% in total, so quite a lot. Berkshire Hathaway around the one, Costco around the one, Target and so on and so forth. Goldman Sachs I mentioned, up substantially, but it's only a smaller position in the portfolio overall. Now I should point out as well that we're also sitting on about 20% cash, so waiting for uh, a few opportunities. We've been sitting on some cash since around March, April uh, this year. We have purchased and picked up a few positions along the way, but we are still, I guess, semi-cautious, but we're looking at 
potentially deploying that fairly soon. And then we can look at a percentage based return for each of the positions. So if we just come back up here, this is all at Interactive Brokers. It's a great platform for people like myself to manage client funds through here. They also make it very easy to access markets in the US for us in Australia. So we like the platform. So now if we come down here and we look at the percentage returns for each position over that period, you can see ISRG and Goldman Sachs. The top PayPal has come back a lot again off its peaks, Target up 30%. ASML up 30, BlackRock doing well. Now a lot of these have obviously come through in the last few days since the inflation figures came out. So prior to that, we were still not looking too bad. I would say that it was somewhere around uh, ending November 6-ish, thereabouts, and we were only down, so we we're up 2.65% for that period. So if we look into this as well, you can see around the week ending November 6, the NASDAQ was down about 4.75% through this period. Um, it had a peak of around being positive about 18.4%. So you, you can see the size of the sell-off coming through there, somewhere around 25%-ish. And then our portfolio was 2.65%. So, and then we get the big 10% jump. It doesn't make too much of a difference for us because obviously the currency as well. And you can see Taiwan Semiconductor up 1.5% through that period, but remember they had a big jump in the last day or two. And then we come down to the bottom of the list and we can see some of the worst performing positions in the account. And quite surprisingly, Amazon is the worst overall that we're currently holding, down about 28% for the last four and a half months. This is followed by Facebook. And let's not forget, Facebook has improved substantially over the last week. So that number would have been a lot worse last week. For us, Facebook is a very small position. It used to be circa 4%. We sold a lot of it at the start of this year. I guess we did really well on that call, but we weren't really expecting it to end up the way that it had. So we'll take that one as well though. CME Group, um, surprisingly down a bit, but this stock doesn't do a whole lot. It does pay a very good dividend. It's been going okay, but at the same time, we don't expect a huge amount from this, but the dividend is very good, circa three to 4%. And then the likes of Google, Apple, um, and those positions, Google, uh, Apple, Microsoft tend to be some of the larger positions for our accounts. So there you have it, we're up about 4.5% for the last four and a half months. Hopefully we get a little bit of a Christmas rally following in here, uh, that would be fantastic. And then again, after or post midterm elections, the following year has always been positive. So fingers crossed we get the same again next year. Now, if you've made it this far, I'm gonna put a link in the description below so you can sign up to the newsletter that we send out once a month that will keep you up to date with all the information that we've covered today. And as always, if you enjoy the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you. We'll see you in the next video.